Well, Karina, first of all, congratulations uh, with your daughter, Paris, who's absolutely beautiful. Uh, we're, we're all going to have a Corona story, I think, at some point that we'll tell kids and grandkids, but yours is something else. Um, you give birth to Paris and pick up the story there. So I gave birth. This is our first baby girl, first child. So that life had changed and everything was going to be awesome. And then a couple nights later, I started experiencing some shortness of breath. And from there, it got worse. And then the night before I ended up going to the hospital, I just, I could barely breathe. And I remember shaking my husband and being like, oh my God, like, I can't breathe. And uh, I had like a lot of swelling. And they say most mothers have that um, after birth. This is a couple of days after you brought Paris home yeah. from the hospital? Yeah. So just under a week. And then as an athlete, you know your body. And I was like, this isn't right. So call the doctor. And as soon as we spoke to the doctor there, he was like, <laughs> oh, here we go. <laughs> there she is. Hi, honey. Is she hungry? She doesn't like the story. <laughs> bye, Paris. Bye, bye. <laughs> It was nice to meet you. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, so drive to the hospital. It was one of those things where it was like everything was like felt un not right. And then all of a sudden spoke with the doctor and they were like, get to the hospital as soon as possible. And to say it went, it got real, it did real quick. So the drive to the hospital, I can't, it, it just, it's, it seems from a movie. Like we're going as fast as we can. Um, every fear that could have happened was happening in my mind. Uh, postpartum hormones, Paris was holding my little finger and uh, I was like, is this it? You know, and it just to try to keep it together that moment wasn't happening. My husband was like, you know, talked to me a little bit about faith and was like, you know, God's got on your side. And, but as soon as we got to the hospital, um, you know, we're in the Bahamas and they're on lockdown here. So 24 hour curfew. So you can't just be on the road. So he, he was like, okay, well figure out what's going in and then I'll come in if I need to or not. But because both of our parents couldn't come in again because of COVID because travel, it was just us. So he was in the parking lot waiting with Paris for about four hours and she didn't cry once. She was perfect. Um, but then once I got in, they rushed me and they got a CT scan. Uh, and that was difficult um i guess just even to lay down I, I literally couldn't breathe it was just it was just tough what's running through your head are you thinking you have coronavirus or something more serious yeah i mean being a healthy athlete for me it was one of those things if i have the virus i'm okay right you think so but all of a sudden um they were like okay listen you have pleural effusion from heart failure i was like what? What do you mean? And it turns out that my body had not processed that I'd given birth. So it was pumping out more blood and all, and all these different symptoms where all of a sudden I went from, okay, I gave birth to my body not thinking it was giving birth, heart failure, we're going to keep you overnight. And then all of a sudden thinking about the COVID-19 and being in a room and like being in a hospital and just everything that you think, like every fear of mine was real. And I was trying to mentally prepare myself and whatnot, but that wasn't even the worst of it because got through that. And I remember talking to the doctor the night and she's like, we're going to try to get you out of here in the morning. And so barely slept. I was so excited. It was going to be like Christmas the next day. Right. And what did they diagnose you with? Uh, pleural effusion. So it's basically like um, fluid in the lungs. Uh, my, my blood pressure was so high. Uh, that was a big concern as well too. Um, and then all the swelling in my body, like my body basically still thought I hadn't given birth and this was a week later. Um, and so she told me I was going to get out. So I was like, okay, I barely slept. I'm like, okay, get me out of here. Um, and then in the morning, uh, as I was getting ready, they came in and they're like, so we've had a couple cases here, um, and you may have been exposed. So you're going to have to self quarantine for 14 days. And that was that was when I thought I'd been through it that was when I was like no you're joking you know like I, I probably said no like 10 times I'm like how explain to me and it turns out um even one of the doctors a couple of days later passed from COVID uh that in, in the hospital and 
So I think that like came home and, you know, went straight to the room, like our, our master bedroom. And, you know, the thing is I could hear her crying. I could, you know, I could, everything was real, except for the fact that I couldn't touch her and I couldn't hold her. For 14 days, you had to stay in your room and could not be with your newborn baby. Yeah. And it had already been three days since I'd seen her because I was at the hospital. So it was 14 days where, um, you know, my husband and I FaceTimed about 40 times a day. Uh, we have a, a, a our, our doors here have a, just by chance, a designer put a little glass in it so I could see her. Um, so I would see her several times a day through that glass, little, you know, a little sliver of a door and, and it was difficult because I mean, I'd just given birth, but now I couldn't hold her. I couldn't touch her. I couldn't feed her. Um, it was just one of those things where it went from just the, the high of giving birth to the low of this. And it was, it was, it was tough. I, I can't even imagine. Did you, I mean, were there a lot of tears and, and frustration? <laughs> James, that's an understatement. I love you so much, Paris. So much. Mommy loves you. Oh my God. I love you. <laughs> Keep being awesome, babe. I will. You're doing a great job. Thank you. You're my hero. I went through the whole phase of like, why? Um, and, I, and I think that was one of the things where I was upset and like, you know, even a couple of times I wanted to just go in the room, grab her holder and then come back, and, you know, but you, you figure out that would be quite selfish. But I think I went through the why me phase and then I went through, it's, it's like all the things we learn in sport about being mentally tough. I was like, okay, this has to kick in now. And it, at first it wasn't working because it was like, that was sport and this was life and death. And like, then all of a sudden I was like, you know what? It's perception. I've got to get my mind right where I can see the end in mind and, and lean on my faith and lean on my, it's actually funny. I, I did a zoom call with my teammates. And so I'd spoken to one of my teammates before and I'm like, listen, because of my blood pressure, I can't get into it because it's going to go out high, but I just want to talk to everyone because everyone had been reaching out because I'd put out a tweet being like, I want thoughts and prayers. And everyone's just like, what's going on? KK? So we get on my call and I was like, don't talk about it. Right. So we're all in Zoom, and one of my teammates who's in Shanghai, and she's been there for a couple of years, or a year and a half or so right now, she's late to the call. So she gets on the call, and everyone's like kind of just kind of chitting, like chat, talking about whatever. And she gets on, she's like, where's the baby? Where's the baby? Where's the baby now? And everyone's like, stop. And then she was like, what? <laughs> but it, was, it just made us all laugh. And that's the thing about, like, my teammates have always been my family. And my family has been here for me, but then this time it was just talking with them and laughing. And then all of a sudden we talked about it and they were just like, you know what, you've got this and just the support. But I'll tell you what, it was so hard. Like I, I went through the highs and lows and then I started to figure out I needed to write down things I'm grateful for and just start trying to be positive and trying to make sure that my mind was right in this time because I wasn't going to get through this because the whole scare of dying from COVID after like six or seven days, I was like, okay, I'm not going to die. You know, like I'm going to survive. I'm going to beat this. And I get to see, I have a light at the end of the tunnel. So it was one of those things where, but trust me, I was, I was, I was a mess for a lot of it. You wrote a beautiful journal and you wrote your daughter a, a letter on the last day of oh. your quarantine. Do you uh -huh. have that handy? Oh, <laughs> uh Let's see. You don't have to read it, but it was it was so beautiful. Okay, I'll try. Maybe I'll just try. maybe just the last maybe the just part where you wrote Paris. So I wrote this um, the night before I was about to see her, and I wrote <laughs> to my beautiful baby girl Paris. I look into your eyes and I see the light and hope for myself in these times. If there's something you've already taught me. It is that everything will be okay. It's funny, as we were born, we were listening to Bob Marley playing in the background 
three little birds, which is don't worry about a thing because every little thing's going to be all right. We enjoyed a week together and then things turned. I experienced extreme shortness of breath for a few nights, which continued to get worse. And then finally, it got so bad, we called the doctor. The drive was horrible. <laughs> we drove as quickly as we could. And I sat beside you as you held my finger. I looked at you with all the fears in the world. Tears started to roll uncontrollably down my face. I feared I may not see you again. I feared I would not see you, your father again. We really had a family and my greatest fear, we finally had a family and my greatest fear as I struggled to breathe was that it may be the end and it was way too soon. My hormones from the pregnancy and birth were not helping me in that moment to see or hear your positive words your father was trying to speak to me as he put his hand on my leg saying, God isn't going to take you now. We are only beginning. You remain calmed as I ran through these tests at the ER. Daddy had to make the decision to stay in the, on the, stay in the car because on the island, um, there was emergency curfew and lockdown. So if he left, he wouldn't be able to make it back in time for curfew. We waited for the results and in the wait, never once did you cry. You already knew you were our miracle, but how you handled the situation made us understand that you were our angel. Seeing you on FaceTime with daddy as we waited helped my blood pressure down, slow down or go down and, re well, and reminded me that everything would be okay. Paris mommy loves you. I can't even explain. I can't wait for you to squeeze my finger. I can't wait for your eyes to make contact and stare at me. I can't wait for you to fall asleep on me. I can't wait to hear the noises you make in, pers in person and whisper in the air just how special and beautiful you are. <laughs> thank, thank you for sharing that. That was beautiful. And we should share with people, uh, if you don't mind, the video you posted when you were finally reunited. Oh, yeah. That was, uh, that was better than any Olympics or World Cup game, I'll tell you that much. Um, yeah, it was just... I got to hold her and she was perfect. You know, like it's, it's, it's just one of those things. I was wondering if she'd remember me. I was wondering if, uh, there were days I didn't even think I was gonna get to hold her again. So it was, it was special. What has it been like now that you've had, you know, you can be a regular mom and hold her every day and do all those things that you missed for those two weeks? How great has it been? I mean, I look forward to waking up in the middle of the night to feed her. <laughs> I don't think my mom would say that. It's just everything is, is I, I'm taking everything as a blessing, you know, and, you know, it was one of those things where I was praying every single day for that moment. And when it finally came, it was better than I ever thought it was and, and it would have been. And it just, I just feel so lucky. And I, I think in these times, like everybody, like you said, will have a story and everybody has something they're going through. My story is no more special than yours, but I just hope that everybody has a Paris at the end of the day to, to smile about and to, to have. And, and if they don't, I just want to tell you, you will have, have your own version of Paris. Like we'll get through this. And, you know, I learned so much about myself through this process. I, I learned that, you know, I'm stronger than I think I am. And we all are, but it's like you go through the pit to know that you're going to come up and rise up higher. And, and, and I think I'm stronger now, you know, and obviously sport played such a big part of my life, but this was no longer winning or losing. This was, this was life or death. And I'm through it. Hopefully, <laughs> hopefully I'm through it. I can keep my blood pressure down and 
you know, get through this, but it just having, having your child in your hands when you thought, didn't know if you were going to, it's a special feeling. Well, you know, Mother's Day should be special for all mothers and we wish all the mothers a great Mother's Day, but uh, this is a Mother's Day story uh, unlike any other and we're just so, so happy for you.